The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome on behalf of the people who are Beaumont Presbyterian Church. A warm welcome to you this day. Uh, those of you who are uh, with us in person, also a very warm welcome to any of you that are joining us from home uh, on Facebook or YouTube. We are grateful uh, that the Holy Spirit has called us together this day to give glory to God uh, in this season of Advent. This is a, a special service. Um, this is our service of Advent lessons and carols. So you're going to have a lot of music. My sermon will be about 45 seconds long. Please, uh, 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 smart. And uh, <laughs> uh, no, I was. Uh, anyway, so lots of special, special music today. So we hope that you um, can find this uh, space and this place to uh, uh, to rest and to have your hearts filled um, with uh, with the music given the glory of God by our talented musicians. So welcome this day. A couple of quick announcements before we uh, get to worship. Um, next week is our children's pageant which will be at the conclusion uh, of the service, at the end of the service next week. And then after, immediately after that service, we are resuming our uh, choir bakes that we didn't do last year for obvious reasons, but we're doing it again. So after, um, is the bake sale going to be in the North X or in the Fellowship Hall? In the North X, okay. So, um, uh, so you'll be invited to swing by the North X on your way out and uh, purchase some uh, some baked goods. All uh, proceeds from that go to supporting the music ministry that hopefully we will all be blessed with today. Uh, so please put that on your calendars. Uh, it's not too late. Huh? Hopefully, yeah, they will. We will. We'll deliver. Um, uh, don't forget, it's not too late to pick up your Advent resources, so if you're joining us for the first time today, um, you can pick up uh, your Advent devotional booklets on the way out. Uh, Beth, I understand you've got an announcement about the Hope Center. And one more quick thing about the bake sale, too. There are pre-order forms out in the Narthex, and those need to be in today, so we Appreciate you pre-ordering if you're able. And then from the mission committee, there is a wrapped box out in the narthex, and that's to collect socks and hats and gloves, things for the Hope Center. So just bring them in to church with you or during the week and drop them in that box, and we will get them delivered to the Hope Center. And then one more thing. Melody, we, we're doing that adopt a family at Westminster Village. It's just one lady, right? And, and there was an article in the newsletter with some items that she would like. So if you would like to purchase one of those, please see Melody or email uh, Jane Ireland. Thank you. Oh, poinsettias. Can't forget those. <laughs> Forgot about that. Poinsettias, the orders are due in today. And we will, they will be here and out on Christmas Eve, and you can take them home after that. Thank you. All right, folks, finally, just a couple of pastoral care concerns to let you know. Um, Terry Castle's uh, father died uh, earlier this week, Terry Castle's father and uh, Priscilla's uh, grandfather. So please keep them uh, in your prayers as they grieve. We also pray for Becca's, um, heard today that Becca's dog uh, got hit by a car and is okay, but is going to have to have surgery on, on her foot. Uh, so we pray for Becca's dog, um, Naga. Is that right? So prayers for Naga and all of our um, furry family members uh, in this congregation. Uh, we continue to pray uh, for Sheila Gibson, who's home recovering from her hip replacement surgery. That's going well. And we continue to pray for uh, Jane Ireland, um, who has C. diff and has uh, been uh, kind of had a couple rough weeks. She's been out and about, so uh, we continue to pray for Jane. Any other announcements this day for the good, good of the body? All right, folks, well, let's uh, come to a time of worship together. We'll breathe together, as is our practice, uh, and then we'll have our uh, choral introit, our po poetry prayer, uh, and our prelude. So, friends, together, let us breathe in God's mercies and breathe out God's mercies to others. Breathe in God's mercies and breathe out God's mercies to others. And finally, take a deep breath in. Breathe in God's mercies and breathe out God's mercies to others. My dear friends, let us worship God.
If I could give you words for the very beginning, for the stretches and the yawns and the opening of eyes, for the first hiccups and the first smiles and the first purse of your lips, I would say, oh dear child, how you are loved. But the thing about love is you can't stop there. So I would go on to say, you are strong, stronger than you think. And you are not alone. Look at these parents who adore you and these doctors and nurses fighting for you. And you are enough, already enough. You haven't done anything yet. You've just been here, breathing, sleeping, and already you are enough. And then I might say, this world is a mess, but it is your home, and you can make it better. So always try to make it better. And maybe, most important of all, there is a love that is bigger than my understanding that moves through this world, and I call that love God. And that love is here here in this room, and that love knows your name by heart. Those are the words I would say to you as you stretch and yawn and open your eyes on the very first morning of your very first day. Let that be your foundation, like Zechariah did for John. Let love be your beginning.
please stand and join me in our call to worship. If life was a home, then we would pray. May love be the foundation. May God be the cornerstone. May the Spirit be the windows ushering light in. And may hope be the walls holding us together. In this hour of worship, let us work toward building that home together. We may not know the path ahead, but God is here, even now. Let us give thanks for a foundation of love. Let us worship holy God. Our first hymn is number 88. Please stand in body or spirit.
passage for today, Zechariah, a new father, speaks to his newborn son, John the Baptist, for the very first time. I want you to imagine yourself in his shoes. What would you say to a newborn sleeping in your arms? What would you want them to know on their very first day? What would feel important? I imagine that all of you would speak words of love. It's impossible not to speak words of love when you're holding a baby. And yet, as we grow up, that skill tends to become harder for us to practice. So let us return to our foundation, to words of love, starting with love for ourselves. Let us pray the prayer of confession together. Holy God, when John was born, Zechariah leaned down and whispered words of love into his ear. We know that you do the same for us, day in and day out, yet we fail to hear it. We forget that in the beginning we were made good. We doubt that we could possibly be enough. We hustle for our self-worth and wear ourselves out aiming for perfection. We deflect words of praise. We hide behind shiny first impressions. Forgive us. Trusting our worth is the hardest job. Open our ears as you open our hearts. So thee will my rest on the foundation of the goodness you have laid for us. Gratefully we pray. Amen. hear the renewing waters of God's mercies. It's heavy. Family of faith, no matter how old we get, God continues to say to us, you are loved and you are forgiven. That is the foundation of our lives. That is the truth upon which we build our home. So breathe deeply. There is grace and peace here. So join me in proclaiming the good news. We are loved, we are forgiven, we are claimed. This is our foundation. Thanks be to God. And though children are welcome in worship at any time, any children that would like to can go to the back to Miss Edwina at this time for godly play. Let us pray. God, who speaks a good news language, we admit Listening has never been our greatest gift. We are easily distracted. Our minds run a million miles a minute. We doubt your faith in us and take the easy way out when it comes to hope. So today we bow our heads and ask for help. Settle our hearts, quiet our minds, steady our breathing. Help us to rest in you. Help us to listen for your good news. Gratefully we pray. Amen. Our first lesson, reading from Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. 
Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep.
The third lesson from Isaiah chapter 35. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who have a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear, here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Well, this carol, there's an insert of the refrain in the bulletin to like you all and to invite you all to sing along.
lesson. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes.
the fifth lesson from Isaiah chapter 11. A shoot shall come out from the stalk of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Please stand in body or spirit and join us in singing, We Wait the Peaceful Kingdom, hymn number 378. Thank you. a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, 
Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. So there are a few times after the songs uh, that I heard some people wanting to applause, and uh, a, a, a lightning bolt will not come down if that happens. So I uh, would now offer, now if you would like, to show our gratitude to God and the choir for that offering. So, so thank you, choir, Wayne, Lydia, and thanks be to God. Our next... Uh, doozy of a lesson is our seventh lesson, Luke 1, verses 39 through 80. Let us listen again for what God is saying to God's church. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her, in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women. 
and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made in our ancestors to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her for about three months and then returned to her home. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, no, he is to be called John. And they said to her, but none of your relatives uh, has that name. And then they began motioning to his father to find out what name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, his name is John. And all of them were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened and Zechariah's tongue was freed and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all their neighbors and all these things were talked about through the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered and said, what then will this child become? For indeed, the hand of the Lord was with him. And then his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins, and by the tender mercy of our God, to dawn, the dawn from on high will break upon us, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. Friends, holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, O oh Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. All right, Dan, you ready for this 45-second sermon? Might be just a tad bit longer than 45 seconds. So, friends, one of the really beautiful things about our faith, uh, the Christian faith, and other faiths as well, I suppose, is that we sing about things before they happen. We sing things into being, as my generation might say. We put out theological vibes, so to speak, for that which we long to see in the world. And a great example of this was one of the carols that we just sang a few minutes ago, We Wait the Peaceful Kingdom. It's such a lovely tune. We sang in the, I think, the third verse, When wars of desolation and hate come to an end, when nation meets with nation and calls the other friend, still peace in all its fullness will only have begun. Shalom for all creation begins with justice done. We dare to sing those words in a week after yet another tragic school shooting. We dare to sing those words together at the end of a year that began with a violent mob at our national capital. 
We dare to sing those words of peace when it's all too easy to look around and note that creation has not yet arrived at the full fruition of God's promised shalom. So we gather on this second Sunday of Advent and we dare to light that second candle of peace knowing that there is so much work to be done for it to be achieved. And we do this because we imagine that we have to imagine the world as it should be before we can be led by the Holy Spirit to bring it about God's will. It's about building a foundation for a better future. I've said before this from the pulpit um, that on the day my daughter was born, uh, I held her in her arms while Trisha got up to go take a, a shower. It was the first time I'd ever been alone with Hazel Grace. It was a beautiful, sunny day, and I walked over to the window of our room up on the fourth floor of the North Tower of Central Baptist Hospital, a floor that I will go to, we will go to again in a few weeks. And while Trisha enjoyed her much-deserved shower, I held Hazel Grace, and I just sang hymns to her for about 20 minutes. Immortal, invisible, God only wise, come thou fount, love divine, all loves excelling, now thank we all our God, I sing the mighty power of God. As I held her, I sang these words to her as a blessing. I sang these words to her, hopefully, as a blessing for her life. A life filled with God's grace and a deep and abiding gratitude for what God has done for us, is doing for us, and will do for us. A gratitude, hopefully, that will serve as a foundation for our family as we continue to grow. In that moment, as I sang gently to Hazel Grace, I thought of today's passage. Zechariah, after nine months of holy silence, after the angel made him mute because he did not believe the good news, he finally is able to open his mouth at the birth of his son, and these words are his first words. These are the words that Zechariah sang to his son, John, eventually will be known as the Baptist. He tells his child that he will be a prophet, a light to those who sit in darkness, and who will guide our feet into the way of peace. So today, I simply invite you to be curious about the ways God is calling you to speak blessings to those in your life. What are the foundation songs that you can sing into a war-weary world? How do these lessons and carols that we just journey through serve as a foundation for our congregation, for the city of Lexington, for, uh, for our children, our grandchildren, our friends, family. Because in the midst of a cynical world, we build a foundation that sings as we just did, behold, behold, God is doing a new thing. Everything old has passed away. See, everything old has become new. In the midst of an economy of greed where the gap continues to grow between those on top and those on bottom, we build a foundation as we sang that sings, Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain in hill made low. In the midst of school board meetings filled with angry parents complaining about the fact that their children are being taught about the country's history of racism, we sing these words with hearts and hands and voices. We plead, O Lord, to see the day of earth's redemption that sets your people free. We just sing those words. And in the midst of a world with so many fickle voices promising us salvation, we build a foundation that sings, surely it is God who saves me, and I will trust in him and not be afraid. Y'all, those words saying are not just ink on a paper that we read as we sing. They're not, it's not empty optimism. It's not foolish idealism. These words are prophetic words. They're building blocks of a foundation promised to us in Jesus the Christ child. A foundation we build together not just for our sake, but for our children, our grandchildren, our neighbors. A foundation that lifts up the lowly and proclaims good news to the oppressed, so let us sing into being a faithful foundation that welcomes home the stranger, the grieving, and those who so desperately need to hear the good news of the gospel. In the name of God, the creator, redeemer, and sustainer, may all of us, God's beloved children, say, Amen.
Friends, please rise in body or, uh, or in spirit as we sing our next hymn, number 321, The Church's One Foundation. Please join me in our affirmation of faith. You'll find printed in your bulletin. We believe that God has come to us, that God brought us into being, that this God gave us breath and purpose, that we have been blessed to be a blessing to others, that we have fallen short of this commandment, but that God has nevertheless loved us despite our brokenness. We believe that God is coming to us, that God is not happy to leave us alone, that this God will come to us as a particular human being, that God will be made known to us in flesh and bone like ours, that God will soon give birth, and Joseph will soon clap his hands in joy, that Jesus Christ will be born and our salvation made complete. We believe that God will come to us, that God will have the final word, and that word will be good. That this God will give us the presence of the Spirit to continue our work. That we are called to be disciples to all the corners of the earth. That the day is coming when tears and pain will be no more. And all will gather at the table to sing an endless and perfect hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. 
Friends, let us go to God in prayer. God of days gone by and God of the here and now, we understand the story of Zechariah. We know what it's like to be speechless. We know what it's like to be awestruck. We know what it's like to change plans and leave everyone whispering. What we don't always know is what the next right step is. We crave your voice in our ear, guiding our steps, revealing the way. So today, God, we pause to give you thanks for the things that leave us speechless, for love at first sight, for the moments when the doctor says the scan is clear, for the family that runs to meet us at the airport and welcomes us home, for every small miracle and concentrated beauty in our life. We are awestruck, we are speechless, and we are so deep, deeply grateful. But in between whispers of deep gratitude are people who are speechless for other reasons. We are speechless because of the suffering and despair, the grief and loss, the violence and injustice in our world. With every young person killed in our schools, we lose our breath. With every threat of violence, we lose our words. With every updated report on climate change, we lose our peace, and the cycle goes on and on. Creator God, who breathes life into us, move between us and our despair. Give us a voice to speak gratitude in the face of beauty and justice in the face of destruction. Give us words to heal where there is hurt and invite where there is isolation. There are so many things that leave us speechless, O God, but we never lose your words of love and hope. So today we pray the prayer your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Friends, we'll now give gratefully of our tithes and our offerings. We're not passing around the basket these days, but there are baskets back in the narthex. Uh, and uh, there is also this fancy little QR code uh, on your bulletin if you would like to be directed to our, uh, our donation page on our website. So friends, with, over, uh, with overabundant gratitude, let us give of our tithes and our offerings.
Gracious God, we give you thanks for these gifts. Bless us with a double portion of your Holy Spirit that she may guide us to use them wisely to further your kingdom here and now. Amen. Friends, our final uh, hymn this day is hymn number 109, Blessed Be the God of Israel. Please join me in expressing our gratitude to all of our musicians today. So to the choir, to the bells, uh, thank you all so much for sharing your gifts with us, folks. There's plenty of more music where that comes from. We hope that you will join us for the remaining Sundays in Advent and on Christmas Eve, uh, which will have a lot more special music as well, uh, which will be at 6 p.m. on Christmas Eve. Now receive your charge and benediction. Friends, do not be daunted by the enormity of the world's grief. Do justice now, love kindness now, walk humbly now. You are not uh, free to abandon the work, but neither are... Wait, I messed it up. How many times have I said that? You are not obligated to complete the work, but neither are you free to abandon it. In the name of God, the creator, redeemer, and sustainer, may all of us, God's beloved children, say. Amen. Amen. Friends, go in peace.